started DJing. It was actually kind of random. It was, it, I was watching. I was watching Spring Breakers, or that Spring Breakers, not like the movie, like the actual Spring Break show on MTV. I was like 12. I had nothing else to do. You know what I mean? All the kids are outside playing. It's too hot to play outside, so I'm staying in watching TV. And I see DJ Scribble. He's just. He, he's just. He had like the, like a crowd of like 10,000 people out. It was like a commercial that came on. He's just hosting. He's hosting, playing music. He was like doing everything. Like why why can't I do that? I'm 12 and my dad comes on that night. I'm like yo, pops, I need some turntables. Is that possible? He he looked at me like I was crazy. Why don't you go play soccer or something? He said I'm like no, I want to DJ man. I want to I really want to take this seriously. So luckily enough, um, Christmas that year, I got like a, a starter kit and just went from there. When I first started with Justin and whatnot, I, I, it was I wanted to find a way where I could separate myself for just not from just not being known as Justin Bieber's official DJ. I wanted to have something of my own where people could recognize me for. So I started the brand We Know the DJ, so people could get to know the guy behind the music. One, two, three. We know the DJ. Or you know, at the time, because at the time when me and Justin first started. Uh, you know what I mean? I was playing. I played all the music. You know what I mean? I hosted everything. I did all the sound checks with him, because it was a small production at first. So you know what I mean? Now at the larger scale, you know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not that involved. As, you know, in the production side, but I still play a, a huge role. So. <laughs> I just wanted people to know me for what, what I can do in my talent, so I started We Know the DJ. Well, it's all, it's all about being a versatile DJ. Um, my, my background is, in, is was in the club, so it's nothing for me to gain a club from of you know from 50 people to two to you know 8,000 people. Club scenes, you know, is this being able to do it all? You know what I mean? So. I want to say me being in the club helps me, you know, in the big arenas because I didn't know how to, you know, I, you know I mean, you don't really know how to talk to the, you know, the same type of crowd. It's not like you don't have 20,000 screaming girls screaming your name at the club. You don't have that, but you have to take the same mentality and bring it to a Justin Bieber show or to like, you know, a top 40 artist show. You have to do that. So part of the reason why like, I MC so much during shows is because I have that background in the club and the club prepared me for, I guess, the stage I'm at now. I know as far as my style, I like to be like innovative. I like, you know, find exclusive music that people might not have and put it on the tape first. Or even like remixes. Like I like to do live remixes or like mashups of like one genre and mix it with like a hip hop beat. Like I just try to do different stuff that I haven't heard. I just say I'm a party DJ, party rocker. <laughs> Someone that can just, you know, go to any crowd and just have a good time. What separates me um, from other DJs, honestly, is this uh, my style of mixing, I would say. Just being able to, to like, I do a lot of live remixes, which, a lot, which I see a lot of DJs don't do. And, like, for example, I'll, I'll play, like, a live acapella with no beat behind it and just mix it with the craziest record in the club at the time. And... I'll just do it live. A lot of DJs might go home and pre-record it and come back and have it ready to play. But I, I'm the type of person, like, I go for that risk. Like, I'll play it live. And if I mess up, I mess up and you hear it. But if I'm perfect, then you're going to look at me like I'm good. This is DJ Tay James. We know the DJ.com. This is my life as a DJ, Global 14.